We're in the middle of Scary Movie Month and plenty of horror films have come out in the last few weeks to attempt to get our attention. But it took Art the Clown coming back to really class the joint up. And here he is, now in Kris Kringle form with Terrifier 3. And here I am, giving you a spoiler-free review of it right now. Miles County has been terrorized by this freaky clown for several movies now. It's becoming Hawkins, Indiana. Both of these places should just get off the map. And the ones that are truly suffering in his wake are Sienna and her brother Jonathan. The two survivors in this franchise, they're coming back for a third outing. Kinda. Jonathan, not so much. He's off at college, he's got some definite PTSD, but he's trying to move on with his life five years later. His story is very separate from what's going on in the main plot, almost to a point where you could have cut it all together and not much changes. And as an aside, actor Elliot Fulham, who plays Jonathan, he really grew into that neck of his from the second film. Uh, he had a giraffe thing going on there. I was concerned, but here he looks much better. The neck has taken shape with the rest of the body. And no, I'm not neck shaming, okay? I was concerned. I have the same problem with my ears being too large and my penis. But uh, I'm joking. My, my ears are perfectly fine. Sienna's going to be the main character again here, played once more by Laura Lavera. The budgets of these films keep getting larger, of course, as the popularity expands. And along with that, I'd say the acting has grown as well. Laura, who was perfectly adequate in the first film, has come a long way since then. And I think it helps that she's surrounded by actors that are maybe a little bit more up to par with what they're doing. At the end of the day, these are terrifier movies that we're not here for like groundbreaking performances. These are really schlocky, campy, hardcore slasher films. They get more convoluted than they need to be, especially in the second film, which I quite enjoyed, but ended up going a little longer than it should have and maybe bit off more than it could chew. Here, you almost have the opposite effect where there's almost no plot. It feels like a retread of the last movie in a lot of ways. And the whole Christmas angle, while fun, doesn't make it feel like Terrifier 3. It makes it feel like more a side quest, like Terrifier Christmas. I'm honestly surprised they didn't just call it that. It's a Terrifier Christmas, and then we'll get a proper Terrifier 3 down the road. Now that's not to say this is a bad movie. I actually quite enjoyed it. I had a fun time. Honestly, I had too fun of a time. The previous Terrifier movies were kind of scary. They had edge to them. I thought Art was a sinister character you didn't know what he was going to do, how he was going to do it, and who he was going to do it to. But in this one, it's really kind of wash, rinse, repeat with what's going to happen. Oh, Art shows up. He's incredibly funny this time around, and he's going to do some unspeakable acts. David Howard Thornton once again plays the clown, and he is given his all here. Very comedic this time, with the expressions, the mannerisms, and this is where it's both a pro and a con, depending on what you're looking for from the character. He's no longer terrifying, now he's a fun chaos agent. Obviously, horrible demon creature from hell, but he's having a good time, he's having fun with it. And you just can't help but laugh along with his sadistic nature. Art, once again, not alone in this one, he has his female accomplice, I think her name is Victoria. She was in the other two movies, got her face absolutely ravaged by him, and now she's back, full clown. And one scene in particular with her and a knife is, it, it, it's tough to watch, but yet you can't look away from the train wreck. I'll leave it at that. I am going to have a spoiler video on this in a couple days, so please think about subscribing if you want to hear more details about all the disgusting, depraved stuff that takes place in Terrifier 3. And I assure you, there is a lot of it. Now, I do not think, as gross as these scenes are, any of it compares to the second movie where we have that scene in the bedroom with the girl getting her hair ripped off. Here, things move really quick. It's like Art shows up. He doesn't play with his food all that much. He just kind of gets to business right away. So the tension is not there like it was before. And I think the problem is, he is so much more comedic this time. You're not finding yourself as scared or fearful for people as you were previously. So what is the plot of Terrifier 3? That's a good question. One that I'm not really sure how to talk about. I mean, Art's back, obviously. He's still going around the town, killing random people with his sack of goodies. 
but he's really into Santa this time for reasons that are never really explained. He just thinks he looks cool and people really respect Santa. So I guess Art wants that appreciation as well. So he's gonna find the clothes, he's gonna put on the hat, the beard, the whole, the whole nine yards. He's gonna hand out gifts to the kids, which are not gonna turn out well for those children. I think in this instance, they would have preferred Cole. And of course, Art's not thrilled with Sienna, and Sienna having a hard time getting over Art. You know, the whole psychotic clown wandering the streets at night, ripping off body parts while she finds a magical sword that she has to decapitate him with, only to know in the back of her mind that he's not really gone. Oh, and as a bonus, she's seen dead people. That whole trauma angle, not really that fleshed out, not explored that well. And I guess that's the biggest issue with this film is it feels very kind of all over the place. We have flashback scenes, then we jump to some more of the lore building, then we go to Jonathan at college, then we're back with Art who kind of warps all over the place. The editing is very frantic and it feels like there's a longer movie here that got chopped to pieces, much like one of Art's victims. Yeah, I know I'm talking about Terrifier 3. Most of the audience doesn't give a shit about any of this. They just want to see a lot of gross killing and a lot of shock factor. You're getting it. If that's all you want, you got it. But if you're hoping that the story, the characters, and everything else gets a bit more elevated as time goes by, you might be a bit disappointed by this outing. I don't think this one's as good as two, although I do think it moves at a better clip than two. Two feels a little bloated. While this one's speeding through things, but that R rating is definitely being utilized and pushed to its full potential. You're gonna see stuff in this film that you've never seen before and that you probably don't ever wanna see again. This is not for the faint of heart. If you're not familiar with the Terrifier movies, maybe I should have started there. I can tell you right now, my mom, my uncles, a lot of my cousins probably have never even heard of Terrifier. So if you are one of those people and you're thinking, oh, this looks like a fun, scary movie to take the family to, no, no, it's not. Not for the faint of heart. This is shock, gore, pornistic sauce style stuff taken to a ridiculous degree. You either like that stuff, you're fascinated by how they shoot this stuff, and, and, like, and I will say, effects wise, top notch. We're not doing any of that new fond angled fancy CGI here. No siree, this is practical effects. Gallons of blood being spilled, tons of limbs getting taken out, and you're waiting for that next terrifier hit. All right, those are my thoughts on the film. If you're into these movies, I think you're gonna get what you want. If you're hoping it went more scary, you might be disappointed. It's going a sillier route with the new ones. Obviously with the theme of Christmas, you probably could have figured that going in, but I'm letting you know for sure. I will have a spoiler video coming up. Again, maybe think about subscribing to hear that and all the movie reviews I do every week, which is a lot. I would love to have you stick around. If you appreciate what I'm doing, maybe think about becoming a patron at patreon.com slash adamdoesmovies. It's the best way to support this one-man band. I have different tier levels with different offerings and exclusives. It's a great deal for everybody involved, and I would appreciate your support. All right. Hopefully I see you next time. Take care.